Hello and welcome to the Timberland Investor. Today we're going to be doing some basic cruising. Now timber cruising, if you don't know, is a way of point sampling a piece of land, a piece of timberland, to estimate what the standing volume of timber is, what it has for species, etc. Now today I'm at a parcel that I am actually under contract to buy. Uh, so I'm looking to see exactly what this stand has on it and get better data on the stand. But first, let's get some context. I've been looking for a small parcel of forest for a while, and I wanted to use that parcel to be able to kind of experiment with and showcase small-scale forest management. And I wanted a parcel that was relatively close to my camp, which happens to be about four miles down the road, so I could also use it for firewood production. Now, I've been having a bit of a hard time, because if you know anything about the real estate markets, you know that absolutely nothing is for sale anywhere, and that includes parcels of forest land in the middle of nowhere rural Maine. I did finally find a piece of land. It's nothing big, it's only 15 acres, but for my purposes that's perfect. And there's actually a fair amount of timber on it. It's a mix of mostly aspen and fir, with a little bit of a beach problem in the back. Um, but overall there's enough diversity and enough different types of stands that I think I can really do a lot with it and showcase a lot of different types of forestry and silvicultural treatments. Now I've already walked this property, I've already made an offer on it, I'm under contract currently but I want to do a little more formal of a cruise to be able to uh, verify exactly what's on this stand. I'm not doing anything over complex. I'm mostly just collecting information on species and basal area. You can really make a cruise as complex or as simple as you like. I tend to prefer simplicity. I personally don't see a huge benefit in going more complex. I think that just adds extra complications and possibilities for error to the data. Um, so I like to keep it simple where possible. So now let's explain exactly how we're going to do this. Now first off, if you have no idea what basal area is and you don't know how to collect it, I'm going to leave a link in the description to uh, a, an article I wrote and a video I did covering that subject. Basically speaking, basal area is uh, the amount of square feet over a horizontal plane that stems of wood occupy, um, and we have specific ways of measuring that. Additionally, we're going to be taking height measurements as part of this timber cruise, and I'm going to be doing it with the stick method, which I've also done a video on, so I'm going to link that in the description as well. Now, finally, I'm going to be using a very simple basal area timber cruise spreadsheet that I built, and if you want to download that, I'm going to provide a link for a free, the free download in the description as well. So any, anything I'm doing here, I'm going to provide resources in the description, so be sure to check that out. Okay, now first off, I'm going to cover exactly how I designed this cruise, and again, pretty basic. So I'm using here um, an app called Avenza Maps. And what I have, it's a very basic KML file uh, that I got for the property. There's really not a whole lot of uh, GIS data available for this township, so you gotta go with what I had. Um, so I just, just have that very simple parcel and I distributed you know, somewhat randomly, I don't wanna get too academic about it, uh, seven points. And each one of these points is where I'm gonna navigate to to take my data. Now, once I'm at each point, I'm going to take the basal area, and I have here a 10 BAF prism that I'll be using. So I'll be, be taking that data by species and measuring the average height for the stand, just somewhat, uh, somewhat arbitrarily, but find a tree that's representative of what I'm seeing in that area and take the height of that tree. And I'm gonna be recording it on this spreadsheet here. So I populated in the species that worked for me. I have fir, aspen, spruce, tolerant hardwood, so that would be your sugar maple, um, ash, there's a lot of ash in this stand, and um, yellow birch. And then I have beech, because I know there's a component of beech in the back. And then it's going to auto-populate the total basal area for that point. And then at the bottom, it's gonna give me the average basal area um, by species, and then the total basal area and height from which we can derive useful data. So the important thing to remember here is there's a, a section up here where you have to put in input your uh, BAF, so it's a 10 BAF for me, and then your number of plots, which is important for finding the average. So that's all you really need to do. Now, like I said, you can kind of modify this depending on what your uses are. You can do it by just softwood and hardwood, you can do it by product, you know, pulpwood, saw timber, etc. Um, it's just a basic tool to give you some basic data. That's all it is. So without further ado, let's navigate to the first point so you can actually see the system in action. And from there, we'll traverse the rest of the stand. Now, like I said, I'm using Avenza Maps to navigate. If you have any familiarity with mapping systems, Avenza Maps is great, but you do have to kind of be able to make your own geo PDFs, which is inaccessible to most people. Uh, you can use any sort of mapping program you want to do this. You can even use just a paper map if you want. You just have to be somewhat good with a compass, and that's really the only prerequisite. 
So anyway, uh, we're getting 350 degrees for our first bearing, so let's follow that. That way. So our first plot landed in somewhat of an opening. We're kind of near a skid trail from the last harvest, and you can see a lot of older stumps around us. Um, so it might be a little lower because of that, but that's okay. That's part of cruising. You want to, um, you know, get as much of a sample of what the ground really looks like as possible, so you don't really want to bias it. Sometimes you're going to be in really dense areas. Sometimes you're going to be in more open. That said, there's enough uh, big stems around me that I think we're going to get a pretty good reading. So let's swing my prism here. And like I said, if you don't know how this works, uh, please check out the resource in the description. It's going to make a lot more sense if you do that. Um, and let's begin. So the first thing to remember is that when you're doing this, you always want to find an easy starting spot so you don't forget where you're, uh, where you're starting. It's really easy to double count things if you forget and then you know go past the 12 o'clock position or whatever. Um, so luckily here, there's a big fir kind of in front of me that's easy to remember, easy to start with. So I'm going to start with that. Let's see what I get. So our first point got us uh, 90 square feet of basal area. That's a count of nine with a 10 BAF prism. Uh, and that works out to eight balsam fir, and then we have one black ash over there. I think it's black ash. So next we're going to estimate the height, and that tree over there seems pretty representative of the height of this, this plot. So I'm going to take the height of that tree, and I'm going to do that with the stick method. Basically, I'm going to force a 45 degree angle between myself and the top of that tree, and then measure the distance between myself and the tree. Once again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, link in the description. Check it out. All right, so that gave us 50 feet exactly, which is a nice even number. Um, so now I'm just going to input both the basal area data and the height data into my spreadsheet. So again, fur, eight fur, whoops, and then tolerant hardwood, this is ash, the so tolerant hardwood, one, and let's actually adjust this to seven while we're at it. All right, so basal area of 90 so far. There's no drop down menu, so we'll just type it in manually. We'll put 50. That, there we go. Next point, we'll pull up a Venza maps again. Navigate to our next point. 9.25 degrees. That way. Let's go. Okay, so we're at the second plot now, which if you look, is uh, a little more than halfway up the property. And sometimes when you're doing stuff like this, the qualitative stuff that you notice as you're walking through is just as important as the actual data itself. And what's pretty clear is that in the front, we have a lot of aspen and fir, a lot of big fir that's a kind of starting to decline quite a bit. And then we're kind of, the, the uh, block slopes up this way. So this is the very highest point of this particular parcel. And it slopes up towards the uh, northwest. And as you're going up that hillside, you start to get a lot more beach. And the uh, size of the trees starts to decline. So this was a harder harvest last time it was harvested. Um, so most of the mature timber on this block is in the first seven acres or so right towards the front. And that's fine, um, but it's important to know stuff like that. So we're going to do the same thing here that we did in the first point, and then we're going to do the same thing in the rest of the points. So we're going to swing our prism, take a height measurement. Let's go. Okay, so we got uh, four trees, so that's 40 square feet of basal area, three balsam fir, one tolerant hardwood, and uh, we'll go from there. Now we also got 32 feet for height, so let's plug that data in and move on to our next point. Moving straight north from here. It's getting dark. I wonder if it's going to rain that way. Okay, we're at plot three now. I haven't taken any data, but uh, we're kind of at the top of the hill I was describing previously. And one thing that's very clear is that towards the top of the hill, there's a lot of beach. Now, the problem with American beach is it's susceptible to something called uh, beach canker. And it renders the wood pretty much useless. It's usable for firewood and wood pulp, but that's about it. And there's another huge problem, which is it's kind of the hydra of trees. When you sever the stem, when you harvest it, you get a bunch of what are called root suckers. So the tree actually grows back both from the stump and the roots will shoot up extra stems, kind of like aspen, but the tree is a lot less valuable than aspen. Um, and so it's a very hard tree to get rid of and it has a ten tendency to just kind of inundate whatever stand it's in. So you can see there's quite a bit of these little stems in here. Uh, it's very thick. And uh, when I have this property as my own, I'm going to have to do some remedial treatment, likely with herbicide. Um, now, 
And on larger parcels, you might actually treat it with an aerial spray, but in this case, I'll probably inject the stems uh, with glyphosate. I'll probably do a video on that when the time comes. So let's collect data and then move on. Okay, I got five trees, um, a couple that were just barely merchantable. Uh, we got three beech, one tolerant hardwood, one aspen. And uh, we'll, we're gonna say 20 feet for the height. Head back down the hill, 78 degrees to the next point. Let's go. Okay, so we're not at the next point yet, but we're kind of in an open area. And I wanted to show you guys kind of the effect that beech has. So you can see the conifers, that's balsam fir. And then you can see the broad leaves kind of in behind it. Now there are a few overtopping sugar maple, which you probably can't see on screen. But these, these right here, um, that's American beech. So the fir is a valuable species. And what that beech is doing is it's just growing in so tight, it's choking out everything else. Um, so not only is there opportunity cost to growing beech, but it's literally suppressing other valuable species. So it's really important that we take care of it. So like, I'm, like I was saying, I will be doing some sort of herbicidal treatment to take care of this, as well as harvest if I can. Anyway, I just thought it was important to point that out because it's pretty, pretty easy to see that problem here. Uh, let's continue on to the next point. Okay, so we're back down kind of towards the bottom of the hill. So this is our fourth point. So we're making our way back to the truck after this. Okay, so seven total, 70 square feet of basal area. We have two balsam fir, three tolerant hardwoods, and two beech. 40 feet here, so let's record this data and move on. All right, second to last plot. I'm gonna speed through this one. All right, as I was looking at the map, I actually lied. I'm not sure why I'm so bad at counting, but we actually have two more plots. Uh, so let's go to the real second to last plot now. Okay, so now we're at the real second to last plot. Looks like we're gonna get a white spruce in this one, so that's good. Like to see that represented in the data, even if just a little bit. Uh, so let's go. So we got six trees total, uh, five balsam fir, one spruce, and then we got 50 feet in height. So let's type in that data and then head to our last point and then we'll discuss some of these results back at the truck. Final point, it's kind of a grand finale as you can see. I'm probably gonna get a lot of fir in this one. So all we can do is count, take our measurements, and be on our way. All right, yeah, there's a lot in that one. Uh, we actually got 15, so 150 square feet and three of those were aspen and the remaining were balsam fir. Uh, on top of that, it's 55 feet for our count, for our height count. Um, let's add that in, go back to the truck, look at the data. So we're back at the vehicle now and we had a bit of a rain shower, but it's over. Uh, and I wanted to show you my results. So I'm gonna pull those up on the screen right here and you can see the spreadsheet for yourself. Now, as you can see, we had about 74 square feet of basal area on average total. Um, and the vast majority of that with about 70, 47 square feet is balsam fir. And we had a secondary component of tolerant hardwood, but that's a bit skewed just because of how I classified things. The tolerant hardwood, of course, included ash, yellow birch, sugar maple, red maple. Uh, and so it's naturally going to be larger simply because there's so many more opportunities to be categorized as tolerant hardwood than say uh, fir. And actually with the fir, um, you know, I had separated spruce and fir, which is often grouped together. So again, just, just because that was the data I wanted to see. So naturally skewed the data just because of how I designed it um, in the tally. Um, now we do, I think, have a bit of an error in representation here, which is that I think Aspen was pretty underrepresented. Uh, I'm gonna show you this aerial footage I took of the block and you can kind of see how it looks from the air. Now, you might not have uh, experience with identifying species from the sky, and that's fine, but um, you can see the fir here, the fir, those softwoods, but then there's a lot of aspen in there as well. But in the cruise, aspen ended up being a pretty small component. And I think the broader error here was that the front of the stand, which, which uh, held the vast majority of the volume, was undersampled. So we had seven cruise points total, and only two of them ended up being in that front part. Now, normally you would avoid this problem by delineating stands. Um, so areas of similar timber attributes, whether size, species, or both. And you try to have the number of, a number of points in each stand that's proportionate to the amount of acreage that stand represents. Now, because I'm only dealing with 15 acres here, I didn't really think that would matter too much, but it ended up making a pretty, pretty large difference in the data. Um, but that's okay. 
um, I, I still feel like this is very useful and uh, I know kind of its limitations. This is again just kind of a very rough estimate, uh, nothing, nothing too academic or anything, so it works for my purposes just fine. Now how can I use this data? Well from this I can actually uh, take several different types of volume tables and make estimates of volume. So I'm going to pull up another image on the screen and this is a volume table to determine the uh, amount of chords based on the basal area and the height which yeah those were the two attributes that I measured so I was, was kind of had this outcome in mind. So we ended up getting an average height of about 40 feet and um, on this chart here the x-axis is going to be your height and the y-axis is going to be your basal area. So we had, we'll, we'll round up to 75 on the basal area, but for the height, we're in between the 30 and 50. So that gives us somewhere between about 17 and 25 quarts per acre. So we're going to uh, take the middle of that, but round down a little bit just for, um, you know, a little bit of margin of safety. And that, I, I would put it at about 20 quarts per acre. So that's roughly what this very basic volume table is telling us. Um, how does that jive with my experience and my intuition on what's with the, on the stand? Personally, I feel like that's fairly accurate. Now, um, of course, I've done a lot of clear cuts and actually looked at the data of what the actual yield was from those harvests. So I have some experience to judge, from the, in this area anyway, uh, kind of what the volume of a stand looks like. And that looks like a 20 cord per acre stand. Now, of course, towards the front, it's gonna be more, and in the back, it's going to be less. But overall, I think that's fairly accurate. Now, the harvest I want to do in this is I want to take out some of the uh, declining and rotting fur from the front section, and I'm wanting to cut about 50 cords out of that. So according to this volume table, that should be very achievable. And overall, that makes me really excited. I think there's a lot I'm going to be able to do with this stand. Um, it's going to suit my needs just perfectly. There's a lot of different opportunities for different silvicultural treatments. Do some really cool stuff to showcase, just like I wanted to do. So I'm really excited. The other thing that I think is funny is, generally I'm used to working on very large parcels. When I was in college, I was working for a landowner that owned 1.3 million acres. And then my first job out of school, which I worked at for five years, uh, they own somewhere around 800,000 acres. And this is only 15. Now, when you're working on such large parcels, you kind of lose sight of exactly how big acreage really is. You know, 100 acres is really nothing. And so you might have, I think the largest harvest I ever had personally as a forester was 500 acres. And um, so you, you just kind of lose perspective. But kind of walking through and intensively cruising and managing a 15 acre parcel, you kind of forget that there's a lot of wood on that acreage and you can do forestry on small, small parcels. So for example, if you just wanted to manage your own firewood and do small scale forestry for your own personal consumption and manage that firewood indefinitely, you only need, you know, at most 10 acres. And that's, that's a data coming from uh, Northern Maine where we get negative 20 degree mornings. Most of the country might only need, I don't know, seven. So that's something I really want to highlight with this experiment is that forestry is accessible to both people with large acreages and just small acreages, you know, maybe a few acres in their backyard. There's no minimum acreage for forest management. So anyway, guys, um, maybe you found that useful, maybe you found it entertaining, but uh, I just kind of wanted to show my process, what I did, uh, the final outcomes and the things I would have done differently from this little experiment. But overall, like I said, I'm really excited. Um, I can't wait to start working on this piece of land. I close in a few weeks, uh, so expect more content after that. And like I said, there's plenty of resources in the description if you have questions over any of this. Uh, there's a download for the spreadsheet I was using. The volume tables are in the description, as well as instructions on how to do the individual measurements that I was doing in this video. So if you found it useful, I'd really appreciate it. If you liked, left a comment, tell me what you think, and uh, of course subscribe so you can see more and see more of what I'm going to do on this property. So until next time, later.